Welcome to Data Drivers. I'm your host, Andrew Smith of Think Uncommon. In this series, we examine how retailers are winning by developing an informed relationship with their customers, better understanding what their customers want, and using data and analytics to deliver increased sales. In this episode, we'll explore how data helps retailers forecast and make real-time decisions based on sales and costs. By analyzing customer data, retailers can gain insights into customer behavior, preferences, and purchasing patterns, which can help them to make more informed decisions about personalized offerings, customer engagement, and everything in between. So join us as we take a deep dive into the world of retail analytics and discover how it's helping retailers to stay ahead of the game in today's ever-changing marketplace. When we think about retail, there's someone who creates content, someone who distributes content, and someone who uses content. And that's a gross oversimplification, but that's what retail is. At the end of the day, the analytics are the language in in between. The KPIs are the language in between that. And so if I can understand things like frequency and price and the consumer, take, take all the art that is what makes the consumer buy, but actually translate it into the practices and the amount of times that they come and pick up an item, well then the people creating the product and forecasting the product can save a lot of money by not making mistakes because obviously that the best thing in retail is to be able to command price. The worst thing is to be able to give it back through promotions. The goal of retail analytics is primarily to better understand our, our customer and to make sure that we're able to meet the customer expectations. How does it do that? By understanding our customers' needs, the demographics, their purchase history, their interests, hobbies, those things help us deliver more meaningful messages at those key moments to our consumers and helps consumers make better purchase decisions, which obviously helps brands and helps retailers. So a lot of retailers captured all this data sometimes not really sure how to make use of it. Uh, So not that we necessarily want to add to that, but there are other data sets that might be intriguing to blend in to make it even more powerful in terms of understanding how do I actually meet the desires of my customer at the end of the day and placing inventory in the right store. Data helps us deliver those personalized, relevant experiences with our customers. So in the B2C space, those initial interactions are likely to prove a little bit difficult because you don't know much about that user So your ability to to personalize is going to be a bit limited. However, the more you learn about them, the more you can certainly start to personalize. You definitely need to understand your customers to be able to deliver that personalized experience. And so leveraging tools like a data platform that's going to give you that 360 degree view of that customer, have multiple inputs. You're not just learning about what your customers are doing online, but learning about information coming from a POS system, your loyalty programs, bringing all of that data together. Now use that data and your understanding of that customer's profile to deliver that personalized and relevant experience for your customers. And one of the things that isn't being overlooked is just the basic first party customer data, because ultimately that's the cleanest data. That's what matters to me or to the customer, whoever's in there. So when the customer comes in the store every week, are they buying similar products? Is their basket size similar? That can really tell a message if their basket size is going, you know, one week's really high and then they don't shop for three weeks and then it's high. If there's a pattern, that's great. But if it's a customer who just comes in and buys a couple of items, that's usually not a good sign because that customer is probably shopping at other competitors. And so it's important to understand the difference between your loyal customer and the customer who's just coming in for a few products, because from that information, you can mark it differently to the two different types of customers, the one who's always there versus somebody you're trying to get to spend more in your stores. A lot of times we may not even understand the value of that data until we marry it up with other data that we have about that customer. We want to know who they are, what they like, what their income is, what cars they're driving, what hobbies they have. Do they have children? Do they have pets? And if I double clicked on values a little bit, I believe that's one that is hard to understand and certainly probably is something that we infer because most customers are not telling us those things. But when I start to understand their values, I understand how to tweak my messaging to make it the most um, impactful on that customer decision. For the retailer's perspective, it's also very important 
in order to make sure that the customers are served the way they expect to be served. They are like, you know, seeing the product they want to potentially are interested in purchasing. And like, I, I, I feel like now we're living in a world where like time and convenience is like super important. And definitely like if it's personalized and customized to your own preferences, you're going to save time, you're going to have a better experience. And that's something that will be highly appreciated from both sides. When we think about data that you want to collect to drive that personalization, a lot of it's going to vary by customer, but it's really based on what your personalization approach is that you're driving towards. The first step to being able to figure out what data you need to collect is to identify what customer segments are you looking for. Those customer segments ultimately will be how you personalize, but kind of go in a reverse order and back into that data by identifying those customer segments, then identifying where does the data reside, whether that's in a POS system, in your website, in your CRM and look for where those fields need to come in to be able to drive that personalization forward. For better or worse, we are all doomed to repeat the past. Retail's no different. Until something new comes along, you can predict the future by looking at the past. So predictive analytics by using data is some version of what I hope to accomplish every day I wake up. And as long as you don't have a disruptor, that generally works. So the more data you have, the more you can look at frequency of purchase and understand the right price points and couple that with the ability to reduce lead times of inventory because of inventory management technology that continues to be innovated. The goal ultimately will be to reduce markdowns through forecasting. That does not mean make markdowns go away. If you eliminate markdowns, it means you are not taking enough risk and in discretionary spending, whether or not it is fashion, you generally want to take some risk. So I think the hope would be that you can reduce the margin of error. The hope would be that you continue to have opportunity ahead. But the day we eliminate all risk is the day that retail gets bored. Why is it important to predict future demand? Because you want to make capacity and inventory decisions and you want to have enough inventory to fulfill all the demands and also not to have too much inventory in order not to waste any type of products. Another potential use case is to detect some sort of changes in patterns. So you can use predictive analytics to make some sort of anomaly detection, to make sure that like, you know, if there is a big change in customer preferences, you can detect it right on time and be proactive about, you know, changing your strategy or changing your offerings on the website in the near future. I think historically we've been very focused on the descriptive, Predictive can be a little bit in that direction. We've talked about prescriptive for a long time, but I think it's really down to sort of the actionable outcomes in the here and now, which then makes this, in essence, the near real time motion. So what are you gonna do in the here and now based on what you're saying, you're predicting or what you're prescribing is gonna happen? So ultimately to me, this is around augmented human beings. So the ability for us to guide and curate and tell other human beings what we want them to do. What do you want me to execute on? What is more important? If I'm a frontline worker, for instance, there are 15 things I could do right now. Which one thing can I do? Because I can do one thing and one thing only. So what do you want me to do right now? What do you want me to do after that? And our ability then to make use of these predictions, the prescriptions or the in-moment actions that need to happen, ultimately will come down to the actionable outcome in that moment of truth. In our next episode, as part of our Modern Retail Experience series, we'll explore how back of house employment, training, and engagement can impact the customer experience. Until then, I'm your host, Andrew Smith, and thanks for joining us for Data Drivers.